Are we clear? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, my name is David, David Mugo. I'm from Kenya. Uh, if you don't understand anything I said, because my accent is not as good, please don't feel... You can ask me a question. So, what I'm presenting today is the African story. And, and basically, it's not really, I'm not coming to narrate a story. I'm just talking about a few of the challenges that we have as Africans, trying to get more content and more participation in Wikipedia and also broadly within the digital content uh, realm. So uh, there's, there's a bad perception about Africa in uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, people have a totally different picture of what Africa is than what it actually is. Uh, a lot of people think if you go to Africa, you meet animals on the streets, <laughs> crossing, uh, waiting for the lights to go green so that they can pass. <laughs> uh, I can assure you that's not the case. Uh, I have never seen an animal on the streets in Nairobi, and I live there all my life. We also don't live on trees. Uh, we don't live in funny structures. We have, we have quite good, decent uh, houses. Actually, I went to visit a friend of mine in Maryland, and my, my apartment in Nairobi is way better than his. <laughs> so, uh, that's a glimpse of Nairobi at night. That's a beautiful city, if you ask me. Uh, and you also know what this is. This is uh, the only uh, still available wonder of the world. This is uh, pyramids. Uh, this, I think it's, uh, what is it called? Yeah, so this is the only one of the world that is still available. So again, that's something else about Africa that you all need to embrace. Now, uh, this fact about Africa that probably I can run through, it's home to the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. That's uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. It's just in Tanzania, very close to Kenya. Actually, very recently, I was going to Mombasa. Mombasa is like an hour from Nairobi by plane. And from the sky, I actually took very nice pictures of Kilimanjaro because I think we go over Kilimanjaro. Uh, and Africa is the, old, the oldest inhabited territory in the world. So that's probably according, if you, if you believe in evolution, uh, that's where human life began. Uh, and then the great world abyss migration, which is now one of the new wonders of the world, again, uh, is only visible in Kenya and Tanzania. Actually, the animals migrate during the, 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 the dry season. They migrate from Kenya across to Tanzania, the Serengeti, and then they go back to the Mara uh, when the seasons change. Uh, the hottest place in the world is uh, Al-Yazizia Al in Libya. And then there's 2,100 plus languages in Africa. Uh, and all the other facts, I'm sure you can run through that quickly. Uh, I think the world's fastest animal is something worth noticing. And Africa's are innovators. Um, if you look at that, that's... Uh, most, most children in Africa don't have the privilege of uh, getting their parents to buy fancy toys from Toy World and you know all that. So we actually get innovative as early as uh, three years old and we make our own toys. Uh, this is, if you look at that, that's an emulation of a car. Uh, you can see the wheels are made from uh, rubber shoes, cuttings from a rubber shoe. Uh, the body is actually a jerry can. Uh, and and that's, that's, people began being innovative at very early stages in life. Uh, I don't know if any one of you has heard about M-Pesa. Yes, M-Pesa is made in Kenya. It is the world's uh, biggest mobile money transfer. It is the most successful case study in, in, in mobile money. Uh, they said last month that Western, uh, I mean, mobile money, uh, M-Pesa does more transactions in one day than Western Union in the entire month worldwide. So 
That's again coming from Africa. Uh, this guy is called Chief Karaoke. He's actually a, a chief, uh, a chief in Kenya in the in the in the ranking of administration. Is the lowest uh, in the rank of uh, the government administration in the provinces. Uh, he uses he, he he knows that not many people have access to the internet, but everybody has a mobile phone. And Twitter has a, an SMS notification service uh, on on on. If you follow me on Twitter via text, then you get everything that I tweet. So he's gone around the village teaching people how to use Twitter via text. So even if they don't have fancy phones or access to the internet, they get these notifications uh, every time he tweets. And he's been using this to make announcements. And this guy has been featured on all big media, CNN, everything. Talk about it. Uh, if you read the message on the screen on, on the side, it's one of them is actually in Swahili. Uh, it says, "Kondo, uh, kondo, nume wa white, brown na mepotea hivi jioni, na akona na akona kamba ya nylon." Okay, basically the message is trying to say that a ship has been stolen, uh, and uh, you know a brownish ship, and he has a nylon uh, I don't know what you call a strap, a nylon strap on it, and if you have any information about it, you can call the chief and he will. Again, communicate this to the owner. And it's a very effective way of communication in a very remote way, in a, in a remote place where people don't have access to the internet or any other uh, way of communication apart from SMS. And it works greatly. So you can follow this guy on Twitter. Uh, you can, if you Google Chief Karaoke, you'll actually find a lot of information about him. Um, so basically, in, in short, we have been able to, out of necessity, Africa has been able to create technologies that are only available on very cheap handsets. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about USSD technology. Uh, it's, it's basically using commands on, on text mobile to, to send back, uh, to receive information maybe saved on a server at the, at the mobile provider. Uh, SDK is a, like a SIM, SIM service, SIM toolkit that uh, again you can create applications around. Uh, we have mobile banking, like uh, USSD services that connect to your bank account and you're able to get uh, information uh, about your balances, you can do transfers, and it's, it's growing. And we can also cross-source information via SMS. So again, that's an African innovation. Uh, Ushahidi, is one of the biggest, I think it's the biggest uh, crowd mapping uh, software in the world. Uh, this is built in Kenya again. It was inspired by the election violence we had in 2008, and a group of young people came together to try and, you know, uh, find a way of reporting the crisis where, like, whatever was happening where. And they put up a tool that now has been used all over the world. Uh, the, the, the dots on the map is where already this has been implemented. Uh, it was used in Haiti during the earthquake uh, to you know, help rescue people. It was used in Mexico during the, the oil leak and a lot of other places. It's been used to monitor elections and make sure we have credible elections in a lot of places. So again, this is another innovation from Africa and one of the many positive stories of Africa that really are never told. So what's wrong? Why, why does everybody get the wrong picture? Uh, my biggest problem is with international media. Uh, we are misreported. Uh, misreported. Uh, we have African journalists, but most international media actually send journalists from America, from Europe, from everywhere else to go stay in Africa and report. Uh, these people sometimes I don't think do their work properly. I think I will quote a government official in my country who says they only sit down and eat hamburgers and then quickly to make a story, they have to create s s their own stories sometimes. So um, a, a very recent case where uh, Al-Shabaab is a militia group attacked, uh, they bombed a building in Nairobi. And instead of that being reported that way, BBC had a headline saying, that Kenya was in a crisis and there was political violence on TV. 
So, and, and Kenyans actually went viral on it uh, on Twitter, and uh, again, BBC had to apologize for that. But this is one of the many cases uh, that sometimes don't even go, I mean, nobody notices that, that they were reporting the wrong information. And somehow, uh, something happens, it's misreported, and eventually, because uh, Wikipedians will like to write stories about it, they write something and use that as a reference, and it ends up on Wikipedia as a credible story because it had a reference on a, on a, on a news website that probably just got the wrong information. Uh, the other blame is the NGO world. Uh, there's a lot of good NGOs doing good work in Africa, but there's also a big percentage of them who just take advantage of the situation to enrich themselves. And it's a sad situation, but it's true. The other thing is illiteracy. Um, our, our education, quality of education is not perfect in most countries in Africa. Uh, we have low quality, I mean, uh, very high illiteracy levels compared to other parts of the world. So that means there's very few people who can get uh, accurate information written to be published anywhere. That the percentage of the people who can write uh, accurate things is very small. Uh, the other big part of the problem is Wikipedia. I'm sure you're about to stone me, don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Wikipedia is great, and, and we love it. And the entire world is looking at Wikipedia as a great source of information. So why is it a problem in Africa? Because there's no information about Africa. So does that mean there's no information about Africa everywhere else because there's not much information about Africa? So as a challenge to everyone here, uh, know that we take Afri uh, Wikipedia, most of us will see Wikipedia as a problem in Africa because it's documenting everything else everywhere except in Africa. Does that mean we don't exist? Africa, like we said earlier, is the second largest uh, continent with a great history and culture. So take this as a challenge. Let's do more on that. Who can tell me who this is? Anyone? Wow. Where are the Americans? I'm surprised. Nobody knows who that is. Is there any American here? OK, this is Barack Obama's grandmother. Uh, okay, there's a whole page that I can scroll four or five times on my screen about her. Uh, who knows who that is? Anybody? <laughs> okay, please don't guess. If you know who this is, please just show me your hand. Not John. I told you this morning. <laughs> Anyone? This is Barack Obama's other grandmother from Kenya. Now, uh, it is very sad. This is the, the Wikipedia page about her. <laughs> Seriously. I can scroll three, four times on the, the, the story of uh, this other grandmother. I can't even remember her name, sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Sarah Obama's page is two lines. That one, the, link, uh, the first link there refers to a very small portion on the article about Bam uh, Barack Obama's family. So what I'm saying is that we have potentially a lot of information that should be on Wikipedia that is not there because we have a number of problems that Africa faces to get our content on Wikipedia. Uh, I tell you, this is a story that was uh, put for deletion. Uh, this is actually the, the definition on, on uh, Wikishonary. But there was also a story that was already deleted uh, about the same Guy, Bonoko, I'll tell you a story about this guy. Uh, this guy was a, a, a street orphan. He lived in uh, one of the, the, the suburbs of Nairobi as a street child. And he witnessed a police officer shooting uh, somebody by mistake who was, who was supposed to be a criminal, but he wasn't actually. So he, he told his story to journalists you know uh, he, he tried to explain that this guy was not a thief 
he knew him he used to sell he, he was a butcher somewhere you know selling meat not butchering people <laughs> but uh so this guy knew uh, he, he explained his story to the media and it went on the news and then somebody just took uh took the clips from his evidence and made a song out of it so they put a beat on it a dj made a song on it and eventually this guy uh was picked by one of the radio stations and he became now who is one of the most popular presenters in Nairobi, radio presenters. His story cannot go on Wikipedia because it's not verifiable anywhere else. A big challenge. I, I believe somebody like that is actually somebody worth <laughs> even putting a billboard about. It's a great story, but it's not on Wikipedia. It was actually deleted. It was there. We put it up, but it was deleted. So uh, we're told to have citations, but from where? Uh, most African cultures are not documented. Uh, we have a lot of small languages that are never published. Computer literacy in Africa is still very low. And, and even the people who have computer literacy, also access to computers is not that high. And when you get to the access of computers, again, the access of the internet is not that high again. Uh, centralization of government services is another big problem in Africa because we have uh, th the governments in Africa concentrate on building capital cities and the rest of the country is left you know uh, th there's no nobody cares about the infrastructure there nobody cares about information services nothing happens so I'm actually very happy that my country is now decentralizing the government the new constitution that we have so uh, I think this is going to be a challenge that we can slowly overcome um, then state-controlled media. Until very recently, we have had most African, th there's a lot of African media that is still controlled by the state, including the private. They are given guidelines on how to do their business. So that means you're relying on content that was actually controlled because we say we want citations f for articles from, you know, credible media houses. Uh, uh, the, f the biggest newspaper in Kenya is called Nation. The nation got online about three, four years ago. So what about all the content from 1900 when the nation started publishing? So we really don't have anywhere to get our citations from. And it doesn't mean we don't have great stories. We do have a lot of big stories. We have educational stories. We have cultural stories. We have everything, but we don't have any references. Does it mean that we will never cross Wikipedia? Should we just move and start another project somewhere else so that we can create our own guidelines and ways of, you know, can we just abandon Wikipedia and move? Or can we create this or can we have solutions that can solve these problems? And then we have uh, information censorship in a lot of countries. There's specific things you can never report about even if you're a journalist. So again, this is information that just gets passed by, and it'll never be published. Uh, a few bloggers have come up, and, and they're, they're trying to write about what they know. But again, blogs are not a credible source of information for Wikipedia. So that's something else we need to look at. The definition of uh, citation in Wikipedia is just broadly, a citation is a reference to, pu uh, to, publish, to a published or unpublished source. And just note, it's not always the original source. So what, what stops us from creating our own source of that citation? And then why is it necessary to have an external source when we can somehow find other ways of verifying the content? So I, I propose a few solutions to that. Uh, I would propose creating a human citation uh, community where we have uh, communities of volunteers who can uh, probably just uh, eventually go through articles and find a way if, if you're writing something about my country I'm sure I have a few ways of verifying if that's a good article and maybe we can f uh, create a, a specific uh, way of uh, grading the quality of the content before it's actually published and, and maybe uh, the second point there, create an article incubator 
where we publish articles on a space that is not, you know, the, the live Wikipedia. Uh, and, and, and it's probably available to uh, the volunteer uh, citation community. And once an article is verified, then it goes public without necessarily having uh, other sources or other citations. Uh, and then I'll jump the start point and go to oral citations. Uh, I, I think I was just in a session where they were talking about oral citations. I got this from a project that uh, one of us here had talked about. And I think this is a great idea because, again, we have, uh, if you're trying to document culture and, and uh, history, there's people of age in Africa who haven't gone to any class, but they have a lot to tell. We can go there with our recorders and have great stories coming out and probably just, we probably need translators and there we get more content. Uh, again, I'll say we need to create more awareness in Africa. So by creating competitions and, and, and edit campaigns, uh, we get more Africans participating. We avoid the, the, the scenarios of uh, a big percentage of content about Africa being contributed by foreigners. You get more accuracy if you get the locals writing about themselves, as opposed to getting foreigners uh, doing your story. Uh, convincing institutions in Africa also that uh, the, the content on Wikipedia is authentic and genuine and, and you know, of high quality and reliable. Uh, I have been to places where people ask me a lot of questions. Sometimes I can't ask, answer them. You introduce yourself and they tell you, oh, you guys are trying to kill research. You guys are trying to make uh, lecturers uh, look like they don't know what they're doing. So again, we need to find ways of convincing more institutions that uh, Wikipedia is a credible source of information. And then mobile editing. Africa is big on mobile. About, I think about 80% of the internet traffic in Africa is on mobile. So again, if we can get mobile editing uh, working perfectly, we will get more people participating and we'll get more content. Uh, and I'd say kill Wikileaks. Uh, that's on a light note. But I have been to places. I am the board chair for the Kenyan chapter. And we've been trying to, we, we just got uh, recognized as a chapter in March. So we are, we are really trying to do groundwork and create relations with, uh, you know, create partnerships that can work for the future. And everywhere we go, we find somebody asking, oh, so you guys run Wikileaks. And, you know, it's, it's not really a good thing, especially because Kenya was one of the countries really touched by Wikileaks. So uh, these are a few points I'd like people to look at and remember. Uh, this is a report from Inmobi, which is a mobile advertising platform in Africa. Uh, that's over 4 billion, 4.2 billion uh, page views in a year on mobile only. So that should tell you that Africa is actually a real mobile uh, space, and that's that's a way we need to go. So uh, those are a few facts uh, that, again, as I conclude my presentation, that we need to look at. Uh, again, I said, oh, it's actually 70% of the internet traffic is mobile. Uh, less than 22 of Africa's history and, and culture and the, 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 the importance of Africa is only 22% of it is documented. So if we rely on what is documented to create content for Wikipedia, then we'll not have uh, you know, substantial content on Wikipedia. And remember, Africa is the second largest uh, continent in, in, Afri in the world. And there's only two chapters of Wikipedia. Uh, our chapter, which is only three and a half months old, and the South African chapter. And then, again, allow Africans to tell their own story in their own style. In all the, the ways I've tried to propose in my presentation, I think, uh, if we all work together, if we all participate, I, I, my term as, as a board chair is one year, and, and I really want to grow the content, I really want to grow our projects, and make sure that we also have a few more chapters in Africa. I, I feel like I have a responsibility, not just to Kenya, but to the entire continent. Uh, if you need to reach me, oh, those two there are my two daughters.
That's... Yeah, Shalene is uh, nine years old. Her sister is five, uh, six. <laughs> I'm a DJ when I am not formally dressed. <laughs> and I'm not 22. A lot of people have been telling me I'm, tw I'm 20 and 22. I'm actually 32 years old. <laughs> yeah, and I am the chairman of the board. And I'm also, my daytime job, I'm an advisor to the vice president of Kenya on digital media and technology. Thank you. Any questions? Or suggestions? Yes. Well, I believe you were saying that the, the main newspaper for the nation had been, had been published for 100 years or so, uh, but only in the last few years had it been available on the internet. Yes. Um, I think a very good way of, of making that information accessible to, to, to anyone, I mean, the, the pre-2008 or something like that, Kenyan history, uh, would be to try to have them publish old issues as if it was in the archive. I mean, check with me, I mean, uh, you should be able to write that something happened in 73 and say that the reference is the December 3rd issue from 73 of the nation. Even if it's not available online, it's still a printed source. But making it, of course, available online will make it much easier. Something like that would be a good, good way of taking all the existing information and then publish it. Yeah, but accessibility of that information is not made easy. Maybe not, but I was thinking about the, the okay. possibility. It's, 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 it's a good approach, yes. Somebody that this is actually uh, very private. It's, it's a good approach, yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. It was great, all in all. But uh, I find it a bit disturbing, too, because you were mainly talking about English Wikipedia. And I think first thing to check, I don't know, for you thing here, would be to see check that Bonobo or the grandmothers of Obama, how they are represented in the Swahili. Actually, I'll tell you something. Let, um, me, let me finish this. But okay. I, I think that it is great and it is important for people coming from small language communities to be representing their topics in the English Wikipedia. But let's keep it in mind. It's only 4 million articles when the rest is, what, 80 million? So I think what I would like to see in Africa taking place is that you put a lot of effort to your Wikipedia in your own language, and then you don't need to care. You can make your own rules and own policies. These people won't, very few of them will read Swahili. Okay. Um, you speak about um, an article incubator. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I already do a thing when I see a new article from a, contribu a new contributor and I think that it will be the lead, I copy it on the sub page of the user page of the contributor so I can talk about this article with him or her and say to him or her, uh, you can do this, you can do that, and you are out of mail so you can keep it. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I do this with some new contributor to help them. I think it would uh, also add to that. Yes, yes sir. I wanted to follow up quickly on, on the uh, suggestion about the African language edition. Uh, one other advantage of, of beginning an article in an African language edition is establishing it there is it can be cross referenced or translated. I think it establishes it in a certain way. I'm not sure how the interwiki inter links work within uh, Wikipedia, but if there's an established article in Swahili, uh, Wikipedia, uh, having a translation, even a summary in English Wikipedia would, would be a lot easier to argue for, I think. Thanks so much for the presentation, David. Uh, what I wanted to say is uh, I'm also thinking of ways whereby we can collaborate with um, maybe countries that well, our colleagues, for example, the UK, and work on things that we have in relation. Look, for example, the topic Mau Mau. Mau Mau is a famous topic, and uh, so many people know about Mau Mau, but, but then we don't have anything in uh, in Kenya about it. So maybe we could think of looking up uh, ways to collaborate with them okay, on that. Thanks. Yeah, I'd like to also know what to do. Yeah, I also like to take note of your suggestions to have more of the patients. I believe in uh, the Malayalam language, the Malayalam Wikipedia in India, has already started uh, video references, for example, 
since they don't have the pu- they don't have references uh, published mm-hmm. ready, mm-hmm. what they do is they talk to elder community the uh, community elders and via them, and this serves as a document for as uh, a reference available at site mm-hmm. nation. Thank you very much. Hello. My name is Sandosh. I work for Wikimedia Foundation Internationalization Team. Uh, my talk is about the known Latin scripts and the tools we are developing on uh, to, to for enabling people to read the uh, Wikipedia in their languages and to type. By read and write, I mean reading and writing in your Wikipedia. So uh, I'm going to talk and demonstrate some of the tools we are developing uh, to enable non-Latin languages. So uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to cover the reading. So, uh, the problem is this. How many of you, <laughs> a- a- anybody not familiar with this thing? So, so this this comes if you don't have enough phones your in, in your system, and this could also happen um, if you are using um, somebody else's computer or if you are accessing Wikipedia or content from a public internet cafe or uh, you know uh, uh, or uh, you are accessing somebody else's Wikipedia or even in English Wikipedia there might be um, sentences or words from other languages that you don't have phones so. All, in all these places, you will just see, depending on your operating system, you will just see squares, or you will see question marks. To, just to show that a real Wikipedia with uh, this kind of nature, I'm going to, yeah. This is Myanmar Wikipedia, and this is how a, a, a visitor, um, you know, a default visitor without any setup in their operating system, is man uh, Wikipedia. So this is too bad and uh, there's no idea how to see this one or if people are not familiar with the script they will assume that this is the script, man, Myanmar script, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not the Myanmar script. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's all the same, looks good. Yeah. Okay, so this is another Wikipedia. What they're trying to do is to solve this problem. You see this notice? You may need to download Tibetan Unicode Font to correctly view Songa script. This is the script is Tibetan script Songa. So, and th- th- this kind of banners you will see in almost all non-Latin Wikipedia. For example, even you go to Wiki, uh, Hindi Wikipedia. So, do you see something like this? This, this is same sentence repeated. One as an image, one as a sentence. So, image because if you don't have script, you need to see that. So, this is an image. So, what does what does it say? It says uh, it's like the help for reading the text in Devanagari script. And for uh, another example is this is Gujarati Wikipedia. So again, you will see a banner on the top. It's not central notice, it's the uh, banner. So if you are unable to see Gujarati scripts in this page, go to English Wikipedia, uh, n- enabling complex grid support for the scripts. So what happens if you go there? Uh, okay, it's not connecting anyway. It's a big page with loads of information about how to install and configure your computer to see the phones. And uh, so uh, it's a, it's not easy to understand the help and you need some amount of techno- technical knowledge to install phones or if you don't have root access and all those technical issues you would face. So this is one of the issue we are trying to solve from the internationalization team perspective. So what we are trying to do is um, make sure that Anybody visiting Wikipedia is able to read the content no matter what language it is. So for that we are embedding the fonts and we are using the CSS feature called web fonts technology. So web fonts is uh, a way to deliver the fonts along with the, the wiki page. And it, the browser is capable of rendering that page by taking downloading the font from the Wikimedia service. So you, you need not have any kind of installation of the fonts. You need not configure anything in your computer. By default, it will start working. So uh, we started this project some time back um, so that to solve this issue. And if uh, it's not, um, uh, you know, if, uh, talking about Wikipedia, you know that it's uh, available in 280 plus languages for all these 
you know uh, scripts you need phones so to this one banner is not the solution the phones is the solution so what this is one interface i want i just want to sh demonstrate some, something here so here hindi wikipedia you will see one menu it's uh, it's a, a font lokit devanagari font you can select this one and when you visit wikipedia for the first time for this wiki for the first time it will get downloaded and after that you can visit navigate across all the pages without any issue with the font the font will reside in your browser cache so we have deployed this uh, uh, this uh, we, we have the phones available phones for 19 different scripts and it has been deployed in many almost all Indian um, script Wikipedia and so th this is th this this solves one another issue missing phones is one thing and um, uh, another issue is having special phones for example this is the Gesenius Hebrew grammar in English wiki source so this talks about some Hebrew grammar and in in this text you will see some Hebrew text here this we need to show in a, sp uh, in, a in a classical Hebrew or the old Hebrew style with the diacritic marks and if somebody views this with the normal laptop setup with the normal Hindi normal Hebrew font uh, this this paragraph or this grammar book doesn't make any sense so it, it makes sense only when you show this content only in some particular font so for that one and and if to make sure that that phone is available in their operating system we use the web phone technology and we deliver that classical hebrew old uh, font along with this page so you you will see this this, this text it's uh, rendered in that um, old script this, this this web phone extension it's enabled in um, english wiki source as well so going a bit into the technical details i don't want to go more depth into this thing it's, it's just some CSS standard. We just need to deliver the phones in multiple formats. And because of all this evolution of this technology, it's not a single format. We need to support multiple formats of the phones. Um, you know, uh, Internet Explorer prefers embedded open type phones. And um, um, Mozilla Firefox from 3.5 plus versions prefers true type phones or open type phones. So as the many, uh, many other browsers. And uh, recently, uh, one evolving standard in this one is web open phone format. It's called the WOF. And more and more browsers are starting supporting this format, including IE9. Um, so uh, we, we hope in future we might drop the support for other formats and we can do only, only with the WOF phone support. So uh, 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 as I so showed the Hebrew, old Hebrew, uh, style phones. This is another another use case for this one. You know, uh, I hope people will be familiar with the, this writing style, Frankcher um, writing style for the English. This will be very useful for um, Wikisource and other projects to represent historic text uh, as as seen in the books. Uh, you know, to present the same style in Wikisource as well. But uh, to make sure that uh, this is how users are reading, we need to say that uh, uh, use a particular font for this paragraph. So I'm just showing some uh, example. You can see um, um, I'm wrapping in the content paragraph in a um, dev style font family. This is all HTML standard, but uh, the extension takes care of delivering or make sh making sure that this font, Unifront, um, uh, this font available in your operating system by dynamically delivering this along with the page. So uh, 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 from, from the list of the phones deliver, uh, deliver provided by the web phones extension, you can pick one of them and uh, you can specify by phone. Or if you want to, uh, um, uh, if you don't know the font, you can always give some language attribute, you know, the normal template um, uh, defined or even, even with the span HTML uh, things. So people uh, familiar with the wiki text and uh, writing templates will be knowing how to give the language attribute or giving a CSS style like this. So um, it's all CSS standard, but the only thing is this extension takes care of delivering the font. So th this is another example. So I you can see the Hebrew written in two styles. So um, the, in, the, in, the, in the left side, it is with the font and the other side with the classic or the default Hebrew font. 
So if you are not seeing it properly, the, the paragraph itself will not make sense. So um, you, you, can, you can try this extension by going to any Wikipedia, like the Hindi Wikipedia, Gujarati Wikipedia, or the sister projects, Wikisource or Dictionary. It's all deployed there. Uh, uh, we are also facing some of the challenges in finding good fonts. You know, uh, we cannot deliver proprietary fonts from the Wikimedia server, so uh, we are also always searching for good quality, uh, open license, free licensed uh, fonts. Uh, other another thing is we are delivering um, the encyclopedia content, and we want to make sure that the readability is nice. So we are also preferring um, uh, f searching for the nice fonts with the good readability. And we also sometimes provide options uh, of giving multiple fonts, and some, sometimes community come come to us and saying that this should be the default font. And uh, for some Wikipedia or some languages, the number of characters is very big. For example, Chinese, the font sizes are very big. So there we are facing some issues with the delivering the fonts because it's uh, um, the font sizes will be in the range of MBs. <laughs> Of course, the license is a problem. Um, uh, typography is a, is not mature in non-Latin languages. Uh, there are not much font designers in many languages, so we are also always looking for new font designers to develop and de design and develop new fonts for those languages, and making sure that um, these fonts are available in Wikipedia and they can read Wikipedia without any reading issues. And of course, we are delivering free knowledge, and free knowledge deserves beautiful free fonts, then only we can deliver free knowledge. People should be able to read that. So this is very trivial if you are looking at the Latin um, languages, but uh, Wikipedia is always about uh, 300 plus languages. So this is one of the core areas to make sure that the content we deliver reaches the readers. So this is about all reading. Looking at the other problem, editing. Again, uh, for English, it's not at all a problem. You can type. But these are some face, uh, some questions. So I want to edit this page. I don't know how to input this language. I don't have the input tools in my computer. Or I'm using somebody else's computer. Or I'm using some internet cafe. Or I don't have the enough technical knowledge on how uh, you know configuring the system. Sometimes, even if you have all of these things, how will I learn to type in uh, our own mother tongue? So I don't know. Um, uh, f uh, in all the academies or wiki conferences we are conducting in India and um, you know non-Latin parts of the world, uh, people often comes to attend these programs and they say, "I don't know how to type in my mother tongue." They know how to write it, but they don't know how to type in their language. And first of all, they are not aware that they can type in their language. It will be very surprised to know that for many languages, Wikipedia will be the first website. It happens for me also in my mother tongue when it, Wikipedia was started in 2002. Uh, in that time, the, uh, Wikipedia was one of the first websites available in my language. So people always expect that uh, this is the first website in my language. So this, we this website also has all the required fonts and tools to use this language. So to solve all these questions, we also come up with the, to solve this writing problem, we, we came up with another extension called Narayan. Uh, uh, this, this, this word means stylus in Malayalam, but this is a collection of input tools to cover too many languages. Just to show some example, um, let's go to Hindi Wikipedia. You will see some uh, icons somewhere here. So this is to this first one is to enable and disable this input tool. You can enable or disable. By default, it will be enabled, and we provide choices. Pe sometimes people will prefer phonetic keyboards. Sometimes transliteration. Sometimes one-to-one -one key maps, or sometimes standardized the keyboards like Inscript in the case of Indian languages. So uh, I just enabled. I I can type. Without any issue, I, I so I, uh, I, I I can use any operating system, any browser, and I can be use somebody. I, I can use somebody else's computer, but uh, wherever I go, I can type in my language. This is this is not limited to search. Wherever I can type in Wikipedia page, I can use these tools. 
and it's not limited to the current uh, language for example i'm using hindi wikipedia this is hindi tools but we also provide another a big list of input tools in case you want to type in some other language so you can see too many input methods uh, we totally support 58 input methods in 42 languages and it, this this list is gradually growing because all these input methods are contributed by the uh, uh, community the native language communities are contributing this input method and gradually we are growing and uh, maybe in near future we will be having more inputs than any other operating system provides you know there is no operating system that supports this uh, 300 plus languages so uh, an immediate question that all all of you can have about these tools is uh, whether these tools these tools are very generic why whether we can use these tools outside media wiki in my website in um, my my own um, blog or anywhere else outside media wiki so to address this question um, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation International team started a new project called codenamed Mil Project Milkshake. This is just to um, decouple the dependency with the media wiki and make sure that the, all these tools are standalone and make sure that these tools work anywhere and we just uh, release as open source components, internationalization components outside media wiki infrastructure. So we just started this project about a few weeks, uh, one or two weeks back. We might release some of these internationalization components to the public and to the larger open source community in coming weeks. So this is all I have, I have to ask, uh, I have to tell about uh, the internationalization components. Uh, the one important thing is we, in, in internationalization team, we are only four or five developers, but to cover almost all these languages, these 300 plus, plus languages, it's not possible without the help from the community. So um, either they can come up with the input tool, we write the input tool or web phones for, uh, prepare the web phone for them, or they come up with their own input tool and we add this to it. So um, uh, for people here who speak or who, who, uh, who their native language is not, la not Latin or non-Roman, talk to us if your input method or if your wiki has problems with uh, reading. So we are always here to help to add support for web forms and input tool support. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we have five minutes for questions. Yeah? Um, yeah, I was just wondering, um, I understand this is a very good method to actually bring a good reading experience, you get the right fonts and everything. Yeah. Um, what I was wondering was if, if it would take too long in a certain language to find the right scripts and to get them onto the website and so forth, um, and also to make it possible if somebody's in front of a very old computer as it would, uh, would it make sense to have a some sort of safe net possibility to have a server-side conversion from the actual um, script to some Latin basic transliteration? I mean, there are, I, I know in some languages, people are so used to not being able to use the standard scripts in, in all situations that they, there, there is some sort of established way of, of mimicking the sounds using Latin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just wondering if it would make sense to make it, make the article reasonably readable while while waiting for the, the, the good implementation by having a, a standard, um, what some sort of, of transliteration. Uh, yeah, that, that's a technical possibility. But if you talk to the readers of that language, um, you know it's a cultural issue also, they want to see their language. Oh, I absolutely yeah. understand that the long term. So there, there are some languages written in multiple scripts and MediaWiki always has that feature of providing the variant of the scripts. Mm -hmm. So if you go if you go to Serbian Wikipedia, they have it, it, right. it, it's there in Latin and you know Cyrillic. Yeah. There are variants. So if you don't have, don't have phones or if you don't like that script or you just want to read it in Latin, you can always switch to that one. But these are all we we can do this based on the request feature. But pushing uh, something to them, uh, you know, uh, uh, to to to. Um, render their language in some, some other script is something that we need not do proactively, I guess. Sure, yeah, once. Uh, 
I think a better way to go than transliterating into Latin would be maybe that if the original script cannot be loaded, that the server compiles, let's say, a, a picture file, right? And you get the picture instead. I mean, the picture with the yeah, original. Yeah, you have the bandwidth for yeah. Well. So, you know, uh, so if we, if we can render this as a picture using some fonts, then the shortcut is to deliver that font to the computers. That's always the best way, right? Yeah. yeah just to answer your question, um, so the Chinese language uh, Wikipedia was launched in 2001, and at that time, the Wikipedia wiki cannot write Chinese. And uh, people set up a, a, a homepage uh, that is actually Latinized the character. Um, uh, it is not used. It is it, one cannot use it, and actually, um, it is only the Chinese uh, language with version is only started after the media uh, wiki can use the Unicode. Yeah, um, I should further further on from what Chen Ting said is like um, like there are various of. Asian language, including Chinese and Japanese, where font support is pretty much nowadays universal with Unicode. Okay. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to know that uh, whether Narayan, the text entitled extension, has any intention in supporting these languages. I know it is very difficult, and most computers have them. But there will always be some computer somewhere, like in public ca public web yeah. cafes or other places where. Chinese is not available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so far we, we didn't start working on those languages, uh, mainly because we don't, the team don't have the enough expertise on those languages. But uh, we are always open, or uh, we can only, only do that with the help from the developers with, with, from those languages. Yes. But uh, ultimately we want to support all languages. So if there is no questions, we can move to the next presentation. Thank you. So in its history, Wikipedia experienced many blackouts. Italian Wikipedia against the law Octo from October 4th to October 6th, 2011. English Wikipedia against the Sopa Pipa Act from in January 18, 2012. Russia Wikipedia, very recent blackout in July 10th, 2012. Well, they lasted only for one or a few days. Uzbek Wikipedia is on blackout since August 2011, and it's still ongoing. The good thing is it's only in Uzbekistan. So where is the Uzbekistan located, actually? So it's a country in Central Asia, it has a population around 29 million people, and there are nine, about 9 million uh, internet users. Most of them the, uh, are mobile internet users. And there are only um, 2.3 million total Wikipedia monthly page views. It includes every edition of Wikipedia. So, Uzbek language. Uh, Uzbek language uh, belongs to the Turkey group, and it's official language in Uzbekistan. It has a uh, 20.3 million native speakers, according to ethnolog.com, uh, for 2009. And we have also Uzbek Wikipedia. And the first edit was done in 2003 by anonymous user. We assume uh, he, was he or she was Romanian, because uh, besides the message like, here shall be a Uzbek Wikipedia, he, left, he or she left two interwiki links to English and Romanian Wikipedias. <laughs> Notable contributions in have been made in 2005 by the user Uzgen. He constructed the layout of the main page, and he created um, many, many articles on countries, years, numbers, dates, using a bot. And he did a really great, great job. In 2006, interface has been localized by the user Bezot. And in 2007, I, I, also, I actually started also contributing to Uzbek Wikipedia, and uh, we started a small community. We had a first and so far only me meetup. Yeah, we're very, very social. And <laughs> we've been to um, 
University of Information Technologies in Uzbekistan. Uh, in that year, we had the support of the state-run center, uh, Uzinfocom, who is in charge of the uh, Uzbek internet development in general. And in the same year, in the summer, we had a, a competition called Wikios. And the word Yos means, uh, has a two meanings, means summer and to write. So we had this competition. It, it was about writing articles. Uh, the Uzinfocom was supporting us with prizes. We were encouraging volunteers, but we didn't have results. Mm. <laughs> Uh, in the period of from 2008 to 2010, not that much happened, and it's also sad. <laughs> in 2011, we had a kind of renaissance of the Uzbek Wikipedia. We had a redesign of the main page. We took a Turkish Wikipedia as a model. And <laughs> in that year, we have started to update the uh, news template on a regular basis. And in the same year, the blockage of Uzbek Wikipedia has occurred. We assume that uh, updating the Indian news template could be a reason, because uh, all the news websites in Uzbekistan should have a mass media license. However, it's just an assumption. In 2012, the current situation is like this. The regular connection is totally blocked. The secure connection is still available. We can go to Wikipedia using HTTPS, and we got a new wave of active users, mostly from abroad. In May 2012, uh, a bot was registered to help with the categorization, uh, and it also created stop articles about NGC objects. It's like space objects, and it boosted article count from 8,000 to 20,000. According to the bot owner, it was meant to draw our attention to Uzbek Wikipedia, but it also didn't have a result. So what do actually Uzbeks read? Well, Uzbeks are quite flu fluent in Russian, so, and Russian Wikipedia is more comprehensive, it's more full, uh, so most of them just use Russian Wikipedia. And you can see the trend that from 2009 to until 2012, it's constantly growing, having around 70% in general. And 20% of, uh, of the users use English Wikipedia, but it's constantly declining. Uh, in 2009, only 1.4% of users were using Uzbek Wikipedia, and you can see that uh, it was slowly but growing until 2011, summer. It reached its peak in with a 2.4% and just dropped after blockage until 0.6%. And you can see that nowadays situation is just very bad and it's only, there are only 0.02% of users using Uzbek Wikipedia from Uzbekistan. So hypothesis, why so? Well, blocked Wikipedias don't grow well. <laughs> Russian Wikipedia steals attention. Well, it's explainable. <laughs> Many mobile users, yeah, they cannot edit very well. Yeah, and it's about user interface. Maybe it's too hard. And we have no user groups to help, to support each other. So this was my presentation. <laughs> Thank you. So I was told to have a time for questions. So here's my question. <laughs> How to grow Uzbek Wikipedia? Yes. Maybe it should draw more attention to Uzbekistan, first of all. So this will draw attention to your Wikipedia. And may also ask a yeah, question sure. to you. Uh, so uh, uh, at the moment, uh, the Uzbek question, uh, Uzbek language uh, uses two scripts. Uh, the Latin one that was introduced about 20 years ago, but elder people still uh, use a script based on Cyrillic. Yes. So how is this problem technically solved in Uzbek Wikipedia? We just use a Latin script. Okay. Because it's now officially changed, like switched to Latin. And it will not change back, I think. Uh, 
uh, that's the problem because most Uzbeks I know in Russia, uh, which I communicate with, they do not care about uh, the Latin script. They are just used to the Cyrillic-based script, and they are still using it even in newspapers in Uzbek uh, published in Russia. Okay. Yeah, I would like to make a quick, uh, short comment on that. Uh, if you don't know the Latin script, you can still use the Cyrillic script to edit Uzbek Wikipedia, and you mm -hmm. can just yeah. press a little button that says Wikify, and it will convert it into Latin. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of talk about how uh, the developing world is using mobile technology to access the internet, um, and it's difficult to edit, it's difficult to use the open source technology. Have you heard of any solutions for that? Uh, because this is going to be the, the way it goes for quite a while. A lot of developing countries, poor areas, are going to have access to the internet, but it's going to be on their mobile. Have you heard solutions to make it possible for them to get involved with mobile technology? Well, I've been attending some talks, like this couple um, of days, like about mobile editing and everything, but our first goal right now is to unblock Wikipedia and then work about uh, work on the mobile editing. So, um, I'm coming from Iran, so we have this problem with blockade and internet censorship a lot. And I don't know, if there's a solution for you to just talk with the government, that's the reason of this blockade. I've maybe been asking. Delete <laughs> <laughs> maybe delete that article, that yeah. problem, or ask, or say just plug that article if you want and just yeah. let them yes. go. Yes, I've been we, deleting we them. Have, we have a problem. No, no, it's not easy to delete them. Yeah, but the point is simply go. Government doesn't like yeah. this, so we are going to delete this. Yeah. Yes, but because of that, I've been involving in edit wars. Like other users yeah. don't like it, and yeah. they were reverting my edits. Well, I would comment on this. If there was just a reasonable uh, ground on blocking out Wikipedia, that's one thing. When there is just a totalitarian pressure, that's quite different because it doesn't have rational uh, grounds. But it just have a political will to have something under control. Am I right? The point is, we have, we have that general view. situation. Yeah. Our, our dictators are not rational, anyway. <laughs> it's not about politics. <laughs> but you can you can make a compromise with them. So you can just say, okay, you can like what you want, but let the things that are not important for you go. So just, I mean, medicine, disease are not important for dictators. So just let them either. I, I think we should discuss that first of all. Thank you. I think you're very afraid to even present this in, in public. I, I think that's really, really important. And I, I didn't know about it, for instance. And I still try to follow what happens in the Wikipedia world. But well, I, I think what we should think about as a community, wherever we come from, what we can do to, to raise awareness of this issue. Like, you know, write your own newspaper in the US or, or, or in Finland or wherever you come from. And, and raise up this issue, or, or use your your media contacts to to get visibility for this. Okay. But I, I understand for you to go and talk with the government is is well, not that easy. It still, has to do I tried. Yeah, <laughs> you tried for sure. I mean, yeah. So uh, good question, and don't feel bad if you don't know the exact answer because I know that it's very hard to find out such things. Uh, you said that uh, most Uzbeks are. Uh, in your words, are quite fluent in Russian, but do you know the exact number? For example, wh what is the number of, of the Uzbeks who don't know Russian? Well, mostly people uh, fluent in Russian in capital city, in Tashkent. Mm -hmm. In a province, they are not that fluent. fluent yes. Yeah. So, so for them, only the Uzbek Wikipedia. Yeah, be it's accessible. helpful. Yeah. So. I, I would just try to concentrate on that because yeah, yeah, we are concentrating. Yeah. Yeah. Is that related to the reason why the Uzbek government uh, blocks the Uzbek language uh, Wikipedia and not just uh, in general? I don't mm. understand why why they why are they block the only do they have a the, the Uzbek government doesn't want wants to keep down the Uzbek language. Or? No, not to keep them. I think it just wants uh, to take uh, control over it. But like not Russian language, use of Russian language. Yeah? No, yeah. only Uzbek language. Yeah. So we're actually thinking about how to make the Uzbek uh, Wikipedia program. 
Maybe you could ask Jim Mills to come over to his bed. He could exert some pressure over the government. I should. Yeah. So there will be a follow-up presentation about blockage more uh, fully by another on the next room. Yeah. Last yeah, I have uh, one more comment. I have one more idea about how to make the Uzbek Wikipedia grow. To write about everything but Uzbekistan. <laughs> Just for one year. It will make the government come down. Yes. <laughs> that would be nice. So thank you for everyone.